It doesn't help everything, but (laughs) it is something that your body needs to survive. And in moments of extreme stress, right? Fight or flight, when you have these like really intense cortisol levels or your digestive system is put on pause because you're super stressed, these endocannabinoids that you are making right now are kicked into overdrive and they start doing all of this work in your body to kind of bring things back. Hello, and welcome to the Emotional Expedition Podcast. I'm Meg Thomas, and if you want to live a more open-hearted, magical life, it all starts with your emotions. This podcast will take you on a journey, helping you to better understand, express, release, and heal your emotions. Let's get exploring. Welcome. I am so excited to have Michelle Sasson from Head & Heal. She is the education manager and Head and Heal has played a huge role in my life these last couple of years of CBD. I use it for anxiety and I use CBN religiously every night to help me sleep. And so here on the Emotional Expedition podcast, I just want to be able to offer tools and resources for people to help with their emotions. So I am so excited to start this conversation with Michelle. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much, Meg. It's really nice to be here. I'm so excited. I listened to your podcast the last couple of days. and I think it's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So you know what we're doing here, what we're trying to do here, right? Yeah, So absolutely. I would love to know your journey first. How did this all start? How did you end up where you are right now? Yeah, it's a huge bit of luck but also just a lot of like manifesting and working really hard to make it happen actually. So I do not come from a background in education. I do not come from a background in science. Really like the roots of why I'm working in this company mostly comes from my family. I actually grew up in a very holistic family. My parents owned a health food store. My mom was really into homeopathy you know, lots of different theologies studied in my house. And so it was just like natural living was a huge part of how I was brought into the world. You know, we would scrape our knees as kids or get a boo-boo. And instead of like rubbing Neosporin on it or like taking an Advil or a Tylenol, my mom would give us Arnica. And, you know, it was just a, a very different approach to health and healthy living. So that's like my my roots is absolutely in like green medicine. And then from there, I actually got really deeply embedded in the arts. And I went to school for photography. So lots of like visual learning. And something that I didn't really recognize until now until later, is that one of the biggest reasons why I loved art so much and love photography was actually just because I loved nature. (laughs) I loved plants and I love taking pictures of them and drawing them and like beautiful landscapes. That's really where my heart was. But because there's so much split between, you know, artistic lifestyle and sciences in Western culture, then the two don't really have a lot of overlap. I kind of had to make this like choice really early on before I understood the difference between them. So I went into the arts and then directly after college, I was like, man, I really don't want to be a photographer. (laughs) I was like, this is not for me. And I actually ended up working at a natural health food store for like four years. And it's called Lori's Natural Foods in Rochester. And uh, that's where I was living. Really incredible place, very knowledgeable staff. And we had trainings from these natural health food, you know, companies, these natural supplementation companies every single week. And I was just absolutely like riveted. You know, I loved learning about all these different products and companies and more than anything, learning about how our body responds to natural health and responds to these, you know, medicines that we've sort of had taken away from us in Western culture. So 
that's really like what the foyer was. And Head and Heel was actually a company that uh, we sold at Lori's. And I was like, man, I really want to work for this company. It actually, a huge part of my journey to Head and Heel was visiting the farm. I got to see them as a retailer and it was just magical. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've never been on a cannabis farm before, it is incredible. It's just this feet, like green fields and they grow like six feet tall and they smell incredible. And they're this like really deep leafy green. And so it was just this like gorgeous nature experience. And I fell in love and I was like, I got to work for these guys. So I just basically pounded on their door <laughs> for like months until they gave me the position. So now I'm the education manager, mostly because I know what it takes to help people learn the importance of this, you know, new up and coming product branch, this new industry of cannabis, because I was helping people, you know, for four years, figure out which product was the right one for them. So that's kind of like the abridged version. Yeah. But you know, long story short is my path is very winding, lots and lots of change. Mm, I love that so much. And you and I have, which we didn't know until getting on this call, photography in common. And I have never heard anyone say it that way because I too, I've stepped away from being a wedding photographer and what I photograph still, I will always be a photographer. I'm not sure if you feel that way as well, but I photograph flowers. Like that's the thing, like that's, it's nature and it's like really macro images of flowers. That's what I yep. do for my personal self. Like that's how I well, stay connected. Absolutely. And the reason why I, I really had this sort of aha moment where I, I realized what it was about photography that I love was actually being able to see the plants up close yeah. and really get a chance to like be in nature it was actually because I started taking photos for our farm. They needed photos of the cannabis plants, both like macro and as well as like field shots and also some technical shots just to make sure that we have like size and, you know, we can do strain comparisons and things like that. And I was just out there on the field with my camera and I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> this is where my heart is for sure. And um, so it was sort of this beautiful aha moment. Mm -hmm. Also had a lot of that because of Robin Wall Kimmer's book. I don't know if you're familiar with Braiding Sweetgrass. I just, yeah. <laughs> I haven't read it. I just saw it. At, oh, she's a local author, it. right? Isn't she local to upstate New York? Yeah, she's near yeah. Syracuse, I think. Yeah. I've never mm -hmm. seen her. She's a, a professor at the College of Environmental Sciences up there. And um, yeah, she has this, the, her book, Braiding Sweetgrass. If you're not familiar with it, you should absolutely read it. My partner calls it my crying book. <laughs> Mm. because I read every page and it's just like tears rolling down my face. Oh. But anyway, and she at the very beginning talks about her experience in trying to marry this sort of like indigenous idea of that, you know, nature and art and science and, you know, explaining what's happening around us is all kind of connected. Whereas when she, you know, was choosing where to go for school, they were kind of like, well, you have to either choose. You're either a poet or you're a scientist. Like you can't have both. Mm -hmm. And as she grew, she sort of unlearned that and realized that that is a very sort of like masculine viewpoint and not necessarily conducive to actually learning about this world. So I read that and I was like, <gasps> and then I took the photos and I was like, <gasps> so I've had a lot of uh, aha moments in the past couple of years. Michelle, you have just given me aha moment that I have never experienced and understood in my life. So thank you. So oh, good. I love seeing how we, I truly believe like in all of our past, like there is no straight line from A to B and this makes sense. Right. But when you explain, you know, this desire and this creativity that lives inside of you of documenting the plants and it, it makes total sense of how you ended up where you are now. And now, and I just had a moment where I was like, okay, weddings, Weddings are one of the most emotional things to photograph, right? Like so many I'm emotions right now. <laughs> so now I'm, you know, because I sometimes wonder. I'm like, how did I go from wedding photographer to podcast host about emotions, right? 
you just like connected dots for me. Absolutely. So, oh my gosh, thank you. So you grew up in this really holistic uh, household. I love that so much. Yeah. I, you know, I, I am learning this now as an adult, how to be more holistic. What was your experience with emotions like growing up? Like, what was your home like around emotions? I am so fortunate. I mean, truly blessed. My family was very caring and kind and very close. You know, we lived in a small house. It was me and two older sisters. I'm the baby of the family. And my father was very loving and caring. And that's huge. I think that that's a big, big, big deal. Because I think that it comes very naturally to a lot of mothers, doesn't come so naturally to a lot of fathers, unfortunately. And I, you know, growing up, knew a lot of fathers that, you know, my friends' fathers and things like that, who were distant or were hurtful or were stifling. And my father was none of those. Mm. <laughs> so I am very fortunate for that reason in particular. But lots of explosive emotions in my family. That's a key, I think, part of us as kids being able to grow and explore and learn about who we are is feeling like we can, we can fight, we can yell, you know, we can get angry. And being able to sort of explore those emotions. Again, I was in a house with two other sisters. And so I think that that's a huge part of my and our emotional intelligence is that we had girls in the house. So we were kind of allowed to have some more of those, you know, highs and lows, right? It was like expected. I think that if we had had, if I had had brothers, it would have been a very different household experience, which is unfortunate. But, the, you know, the gender difference when we, the way that we treat kids is really different. So I'm super fortunate that I grew up in like a very maternal family and um, yeah, I think that that was a huge part of it. I was definitely the most emotional. That is like, <laughs> that was sort of my, <laughs> my MO as a kid. And still today, you know, lots of feelings. And that was a little bit tough. That was definitely a little bit hard. So even though there was a lot of, you know, r wide range of emotions within my family, there was definitely a lot of trying to kind of outsmart each other because my family is very smart also. And so my biggest challenge was recognizing that the emotions that I would have, you know, when I'm fighting with my sisters or something like that, were not a bad thing. They were just mm -hmm. made me a little bit different maybe than my sisters. So it was highs and lows. <laughs> yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, and it's still something that, you know, all of us are unraveling today. I am actually in therapy for the first time ever in like the last year and a half, I've started like having counseling, mental health counseling. And that's been a huge part of sort of relearning and unlearning that like these emotions, you know, are a big part of learning about our world and being able to feel and that also comes back to natural health and healing is that being able to recognize the emotions that you're having and being able to say, okay, like this isn't a bad thing. It's just an indicator of some bigger, you know, story that my body is trying to tell me. Mm, I love that so much and love the environment that you grew up in. What, I mean, what a gift and what a gift for what you're doing now and how, how to help people, right? Do you see the connection between Head & Heels products and how it can help with emotions because truly how I the my first my very first experience with head and heel was I was going through in vitro uh, fertility treatments and as the process went on they kept increasing how many shots I had to have in my belly every day and so it first started out it was like two shots a day and then by the end it was like four or five shots a day and I found that in between each shot, my anxiety would get really high in anticipation for the next shot. And my belly was so bruised and so bloated, not to mention like how many hormones you're putting in your body and just how like off kilter you feel. So mm -hmm. I started using CBD during that first round of IVF. And 
I would take it throughout the day and it just helped me navigate this really anxious time in my life. So do you see a connection between head and heel products and helping with emotions? Absolutely. Not only is there a connection in terms of what I have heard from people, what I've experienced myself, but there's also a scientific connection. There is, you know, pretty much hard evidence that suggests that what your endocannabinoid system. So let's get into science a little bit. Tell us. Do it. Let's bring it there. Okay. So you, you, me, your dog, your cats, we all have this built in system in our bodies. It's called the endocannabinoid system. Let's break that down. Endo meaning internal, right? Endogenous. Cannabinoid are these compounds or these molecules and system. Like we have a nervous system, skeletal system, muscular system. This system is innate. We are born with it. Um, And every being on the planet, except for insects, which I think is very funny, have an endocannabinoid system, just like they have a nervous system. So what's really cool is that this system interacts and plays with almost every other system in your body, which like sounds crazy, you know, because you'd think that why doesn't it just stay in its lane and do this one thing? But really what the endocannabinoid system does is it helps to maintain homeostasis. And that can come in a lot of different ways. Homeostasis meaning balance. That can be emotional balance. That can be hormonal balance even body temperature, that can be things like inflammatory response. So the way that your body is dealing with its immune system, because that's inflammation, right? So if your endocannabinoid system is kind of touching on all these different things, helping to keep us in balance, we are not only going to feel the change from taking a cannabis supplement, right? to help it bring this back into balance. But also what's fascinating is that you're making your own versions of CBD, of these cannabinoids every day. And when you take a supplement that is from the cannabis plant, it's kind of like a a parallel molecule to what we are naturally making. So it's something that we're supplementing our body's natural system. Mm which is huge because I think that a lot of people when they hear about CBD or about, you know, CBG, CBN, whatever, when they hear about cannabis, people sort of have started talking about it as if it's a panacea. You know, it's just going to help everything. And that's not really true. It doesn't help everything. But (laughs) it is something that your body needs to survive. And in moments of extreme stress, right, fight or flight, when you have these like really intense cortisol levels or your digestive system is put on pause because you're super stressed. These endocannabinoids that you are making right now are kicked into overdrive and they start doing all of this work in your body to kind of bring things back, right? Because our bodies, you know, do some incredible work when we are dealing with outside stimulus. So when we're like, really stressed or when we're really tired or we eat something that makes us poisoned, our body has these really intense reactions, right? Think about like you bang your elbow, you want swelling, right? On that elbow. That's an intensive response that's trying to save your life. (laughs) But that swelling, it needs to go away eventually, right? You have to have it come back to balance. And your endocannabinoid system is responsible for helping to kind of pull back these intense experiences that your body is constantly working through. So all of that, you know, taking the the basics of your endocannabinoid system and being able to apply it to all of these different actions that your body is going through on a daily basis, you start to make these connections that's saying, wow, this CBD really does make me sleep better. You know, I feel much more calm. I feel much more relaxed. It all starts to make sense when you realize that your body is actually doing the majority of the work. It's just CBD is supplementing the system that most likely is depleted or is deficient because of all of the stress that we're under, you know, in the modern world. Yeah, that's amazing. And what happens as we age? Like, does it change? Do we need more as we age? What happens with this? It's a really good question. So it's kind of like a we don't know fully, but Mm -hmm. what we do know about the endocannabinoid system is that Basically, it's made of receptors, neurotransmitters, and 
like ligands and things that are floating around telling stories in your body, (laughs) to put it briefly. But what can happen, it's not necessarily due to age, but a lot of times what can happen is this degradation of these receptors because of things like let's say you're on a really intensive opioid or a pharmaceutical or something that like really is do- putting a lot of stress on your body that can actually damage your endocannabinoid system really strong stress can damage your endocannabinoid system i mean smoking cigarettes right not having enough physical activity there's a lot of these things that come into play with you know, the system in our body not being fully functioning or not being as nutrient dense as possible. And it's not necessarily age, but it's more of just overall health, right? Like you could have like someone who's a 70, 80 year old marathon runner, right? Mm -hmm. And they're eating, you know, they're taking in a ton of omegas because they're eating fish oil and they're surrounded by friends and family and they're laughing all the time. Like that person is going to have a much more stimulated and you know well-oiled endocannabinoid system almost literally well-oiled <laughs> than someone who you know is not in that situation someone who you know is in a lot of pain who you know doesn't take care of their body doesn't eat good food so it's a little bit more of like a there's no like one factor that'll play into it. And sometimes you can have really young people who have endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome, which is actually a clinical diagnosis now, which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. And are there any side effects? Is there anything bad that can happen from using CBD or CBN, CBG, any of these? Um, I mean, I guess it depends on what your definition of bad <laughs> side yes. effect is. Yeah. So you can't the, overdose, the clinical, right? There's no... I mean, right. Like, the clinical answer to that, the correct answer, mm-hmm. is that you could experience basically a high, right? It's You could feel disorientation, dizziness, mm-hmm. which is basically your high from taking in too many cannabinoids. Yeah. Um, your receptors are just, like, busy, and they mm-hmm. can't process properly. And then beyond that, the clinical side effects from taking like pharmaceutical versions of CBD, either synthetic or isolates that have been, you know, put into drugs like Epidiolex, the side effects of those have been recorded as things like diarrhea, upset stomach, nausea, disorientation, you know, dizziness, fatigue, things like that. So Mm -hmm. all of those, you know, clinical side effects, again, we have to talk about them because it's possible. But those are all dealing with really high servings or high doses of a isolate or a synthetic cannabinoid. So a little bit different. Mm -hmm. What I have heard from people, right? The worst thing really that's going to happen truly is you're going to get high. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's if you think that's a bad thing, right? If if you're uncomfortable with that, if that makes you, you might feel increased anxiety, right? Yeah. Also THC, which is present in head and heel products because they're full spectrum. Mm-hmm. They are under the legal limit of 0.3% THC. That's why you can buy them online. That THC is actually a vasodilator. So it will increase you know, your heart rate pretty quickly. So if you are taking, that's why sometimes when people like take too much or smoke too much weed or something like that, mm-hmm. they might feel like paranoid or anxious or they can feel their heart pounding. And it's not necessarily actually a physiological bad thing, right? It's not yeah. harmful in any way. It's just not what the user is expecting Desired. to happen. Yep. Exactly. Yes. So that's the worst thing that happens is that you won't have the desired results. Okay. Yeah. But that makes like, sense. Can you speak yeah. to the THC in it? Because I had tried quite a few different companies before ending up with Head and Heel. And now I've been using Head and Heel for two or three years daily. And yeah. there was a major difference between some of the CBD that I had tried before. And I know I had tried one that was not full spectrum. And this with full spectrum, with that little bit of THC, and it seems to just work so much better for me. Can you speak to that being in there? Absolutely. I think that the choice to be not only to be full spectrum, but to be really full spectrum and naturally full spectrum without having to add anything to it to give it what's called the entourage effect, which is just a 
industry term. It's not like a clinical term. That full spectrumness of a product will always, always, always yield better results with less milligrams. I mean, that is, it's tried and true. We know that if you're taking a full spectrum product that has not only CBD and THC, but also all of the terpenes or the essential oils from the plant, things like linalool and beta caryophyllene, myrcene, all of these, you know, big long words. Mm -hmm. If it has all of those, but also on top of that, secondary cannabinoids like CBG, CBC, CBDV, all these acronyms, right? As well as things like your chlorophylls, your vitamin E's, your oils, all the things that naturally come from the plant. It's a synergistic experience and your body knows what to do with that. It's really important to understand the interplay between all of these different chemical compounds within the plant is going to give a very direct, specific experience. And in in Western medicine, people love what's called phytopharmaceuticals, which basically means that you take the active compound, I'm saying that with air quotes, right? (laughs) The active compound and you pull it out and you're like, that's the thing that's doing the work, right? That's why this plant is so good for you. Mm -hmm. And you pull out that molecule or that compound and you just increase its potency and you expect the same exact experience. You say, oh, well, if, you know, if turmeric is so good for you, right, then it must just be this one particular extract of turmeric that's doing the work. But we know Truly, we know, we always have known, um, but we know that, you know, you can make a phytopharmaceutical where you just pull out CBD and you're like, that's the thing that's working. Except when you take CBD as an isolate in your body, it doesn't really know what to do with it because naturally you're going to be getting CBD in many different places within very small amounts, actually, within plant complexes. CBD is something that generally will come from cannabis plants, but it's present in other places as well. You'll find cannabinoids in things like cocoa, actually, and chocolate. And there's definitely like a difference in mentality sometimes when people are looking for an isolate because they'll say, this is the thing that works. Hmm. And I personally believe, and I also, you know, the the research is there that a full spectrum product that has the full entourage effect will always work better. And so I think that you probably, that's exactly what you experienced. Yeah. Yeah. I never understood it before. So that makes total sense as to how our body can receive it in a so much better way. Right. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned CBD and CBG. Can you talk about like what the difference is? We're now we're starting to hear all these different things. Like oh I God, love I CBN. Like and for somebody who's never experienced it, what what does head and heel offer? Like what are the different types and and what do they do? Yeah, absolutely. It is confusing for a lot of people because there's over a hundred, maybe like a hundred and twenty different cannabinoids. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of acronyms, right? And we get into that you know, people are are figuring out like which one does what. (laughs) And there's definitely a lot of really interesting research that's, you know, helping us to understand. So things like THCV is one that you may have heard of. It's sort of like the new exciting cannabinoid that everyone's talking about. THCV is a variety or a, a type of molecule that's a cannabinoid. And generally what people are seeing is that products that are really high in THCV will still give you like the psychotropic high effect, but generally it it's like an appetite suppressant and it's much more like activating and elevating and less of what we think of with typical, you know, THC cannabis experience, which is very like relaxed and chill in the couch, you know, mm-hmm. THCV is a very, is a, a type of cannabinoid that tends to be very like like caffeine almost. And uh, there's some people who are calling it diet weed, which I absolutely hate. (laughs) I Mm -hmm. wish the people stopped calling it that. But so there's all these different, like these different cannabinoids that are coming out on the market. And it is really exciting, but also like we shouldn't get too caught up in all of the differences right now. What we offer from Head and Heal, right now we have a pretty small lineup. We have our CBDs, which are full spectrum. And that is 
cannabidiol, which comes from the cannabis plant. It's one of the major cannabinoids that's found within cannabis. Cannabis generally makes a lot of CBD. It does have trace amounts of THC in it, as well as all those other cannabinoids. We also sell what's really cool is a CBG product, cannabigerol. Cannabigerol, I think, is absolutely fascinating. I love this stuff. I take it as often as I can. Cannabigerol is also a what's called a secondary cannabinoid. Again, air quotes, secondary or minor cannabinoid, you may have heard. That doesn't really mean much, um, but what secondary usually is indicating is either that we don't know a lot about it or the plant doesn't usually make a lot of it. So CBG is a fascinating one. Um, And without like getting too nitty gritty, generally CBG is something that we didn't really know very much about before because it's actually a cannabinoid that the plant makes first. So it's like when the plant is pretty young, the very first cannabinoid that it starts pumping out and creating is CBG. It's actually in its raw form, CBGA. Long story. Mm. (laughs) Getting a little technical there. But it's it's something that like actually as the plant is growing, the plant starts to turn CBGA into THC and CBD. That's like the main ones that the plant produces. So by the time that the plant is fully mature and like ready to go, there isn't really a lot of CBG left. But what's awesome now is that we're actually able to plant varieties, strains of cannabis that produce higher amounts of CBGA and actually less of the enzymes that turn CBG into the other cannabinoids. So you're left with a plant that's just chock full of CBGA. And then we basically just process it the exact same way that we do our cannabis, our regular hemp, which is a very like low temperature alcohol extraction. And then we just basically evaporate all the alcohol out. So it's it's almost like your standard alcohol tincture or, you know, alcohol extraction for herbs. But then we take the alcohol out and what's left behind is basically just the oil. It's like really thick, sticky, dark oil. So we're able to replicate that process with CBG. And in terms of like what it does for you, right? Like that's always what people want to know because our CBG product is, it's called Focus. That's what it's labeled as. But that's not really... That's like one slice of a pie. CBG is so cool. It is um, what's known as a promiscuous compound, which sounds funny, but basically that means that it is something that like has a lot of potential in your body for a lot of different things. So we're seeing like in research, we're seeing CBG activate receptors in our body that CBD doesn't touch. Things like your PPAR gamma, which is your uh, like insulin in your, it, it deals with how insulin sensitivity in your gut is transmitted. It's activating, actually, there's some research about it being active in caffeine receptors. They're seeing, you know, a lot of different receptors in your brain that are being lit up by CBG that have been targets for pharmaceutical companies actually looking at attention disorders. So there's a lot going on with CBG. Generally, when you take a CBG product, take it in the morning, right? It's going to, for a lot of people, it makes you feel energized. It makes you think clearly. It helps you with memory and focus. And it's also, there's a lot of information out there about how CBG can be beneficial for your inflammation response. So um, not only immune inflammation, but also like full body. And, <laughs> and on top of that, CBG also passes the blood-brain barrier. So it could potentially be helping with inflammatory response right in your central and peripheral nervous system. So that's why perhaps that could be one of the leading reasons why CBG tends to be so good for people for memory and focus and health and things like that. So that's, yeah, long that's answer the, there. No, that's amazing. That's the only one I haven't tried. So you have sold oh God, me I on it. CBG. Yeah, I have never tried the CBG. I've always been CBD and CBN. So, okay. Yeah. C- mm. CBG is funny because, because it has so much activity in your body, potentially, right? It could go to a lot of different places. The outcome of taking a CBG product 
maybe very different person to person. So yeah. whereas I love CBG because I love feeling like alert and smart and awake, <laughs> you know, which I'm sure most people like feeling. <laughs> But that's like, a, that's really good for me. I take it, you know, with my coffee, it makes me feel like ready to go in the morning. And that works perfectly for my personality, my emotional response to the world around me. Someone else who might be more like anxious, hyperactive, someone who maybe has a little bit of that like ADHD type of, you know, mm-hmm. vibe or emotional response, they might not like as much CBG. That might be something that makes them feel a little bit too wound up and they just need something like CBN, which is much more calming and relaxing. You can even take it during the day. So it's sort of all about like knowing your baseline and being able Mm -hmm. to recognize your response to both the outside world, right? And also when you're taking these products, oh my gosh, absolutely pay very close attention to how you're responding. Mm -hmm. Because All of these cannabinoids, because they work in receptors in your body that are already built in, a lot of times it doesn't take more than a half hour for you to feel an effect. If you are taking, you know, the right serving for you, you might notice, you know, a change physiologically within a half hour. And some people, you know, they don't figure out what's right for them. So it takes them weeks to kind of like get the feel for it. But you really can like notice it very quickly. So that's, yeah, definitely CBG is a great one. And I love it. (laughs) Let's talk CBN because CBN is... Which is your favorite. The one I can't live without, right? So CBD for me, really, that was my introduction to this world. It really helps calm me down. It helps with the anxiety. I would sometimes take it before going to bed to even help have that calmness. But... I have no problem falling asleep. My challenge is when I wake up and then to fall back asleep. And my husband works really weird schedules. So he switches from days to nights. And so like sleep is just a thing in our house, right? An issue that we have. When I started taking CBN, it was like, not only does it help me fall asleep and I do, I do do the extra strength one. I was just looking at the bottle. I do the extra strength one. And I mean, I can sleep through the night, like just incredible. So where CBD didn't help me stay asleep, CBN does. And like you said, it's definitely trial and error. Like it's like feeling what dose works for you, which one, how it makes you feel. So tell us about CBN. Yeah, you know, it's so funny because CBN is one of those cannabinoids that almost everyone loves. Like it's just, who doesn't want to sleep more, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And there's a lot of conflicting research when we're talking scientifically. There's a lot of conflicting research about why it's actually helping you sleep. There's not a lot of really good research on CBN because CBN actually comes from degraded or oxidized THC. So because there haven't been a lot of clinical studies on THC just because of its legality issues. CBN has kind of also been put by the wayside and there isn't really a lot of good pharmacological evidence of what's actually happening when you take it inside your body. But we have so many people, I mean, hundreds of people, hundreds of our customers who will say that CBN is the only thing that helps them sleep. And they've taken our CBD, you know, just Mm -hmm. like you. And so it's sort of like this it's this really difficult conversation to have because there's not really a lot to back it up right now, which is really unfortunate. Like we're kind of waiting for science to catch up with the industry when it comes to these THC, you know, offshoots. And what's really interesting about CBN is that I, even though I've been taking CBD and cannabis products for like five, six years now, regularly. CBN is one that I'm actually very sensitive to. And Mm. I don't take more than five milligrams or 2.5 milligrams. So the regular strength CBN that we have, I take a quarter of a dropper to a half of a dropper. I only take a half of a dropper if I know that I like really need it. And that's just how I am because Mm -hmm. I'm not, I like sleeping is not a huge problem for me. 
So I use CBN very irregularly. I use it like when I know that I need it or if I'm, you know, laying in bed for hours, I'm like, oh my God, I need to go to sleep. (laughs) Then I'll, you know, pop some CBN. But it's something that is like really individual for, I mean, and the, the fact that I don't react very well to it it's really interesting. So what happens to me when I take too much CBN is it kind of feels like when I take, you know, you take like too much melatonin and you mm-hmm. wake up or you like sleep way too deeply. I've slept through alarms. It's been like a very, I had to really experiment to figure out what worked best for me. Yeah. So CBN is one that definitely has a lot of potential and tends to be what most people say is that you know, a lot of times they'll take CBN right before bed. And then if they do wake up in the middle of the night, they'll take some then as well. But generally people say that it either helps them fall asleep or it helps them stay asleep. Like, yep. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, or some people, you know, they have to take really high amounts of it. And so it's super interesting. And I'm just really excited to actually see if and when more research does come out about CBN. Fun fact about CBN, if you're interested in fun facts. Yeah, it was actually the very... CBN was actually the very first cannabinoid ever discovered. This was back in, I think, 1896. Oh my God. And they were doing, I know. And so we've known about this for a long time. And it was actually the first cannabinoid that was like discovered, you know, that was uh, written down scientifically. And uh, most of the reason why we think, what our assumption is, the reason why it was the very first one that scientists were like, aha, a cannabinoid was actually because they were studying and they were looking at uh, Indian hemp oil is what they called it, or charas, basically like red oil from India, from, you know, the Far East, roughly. I don't even know really where it came from. And they were looking at this basically like hash oil. They were looking at weed. And what's fascinating is that most likely the reason why CBN was the thing that they found is because the product that they were looking at was so old (laughs) that the THC that got people high had turned into CBN over time. They were looking at like an old substance and it was no longer like the fresh THC rich product that it was when people were consuming it in India. Yep. I just think that's fascinating. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. And I, I love hearing your story and your experience with CBN and how much you use. And that and that's what really I think this is all about is just figuring out what works for you, starting with a little, adding more. And the interesting thing for me is using it every single day for, I mean, at least two years, if not three, I have never needed to like increase, which is amazing. Oh, like so so I feel like so many different things that we use, you know, melatonin, and I've had to just continually increase and increase and increase. And this has been amazing. I love that so much about this. Like, yes, I do use the extra strength version. But sleep is a thing for me. And many people who are going through hormonal changes, whether it be menopause or fertility treatments, like when your hormones are like that, your sleep is dramatically affected by the imbalance in the hormones. And so you even now see it at fertility clinics, which I think is amazing. So for fertility clinics, the reasons why they have it literally on their shelves there and are selling it to to women going through these treatments is to help with sleep, to help with anxiety and stress, but also everything in the fertility world is about reducing inflammation in the body. And so Mm. what we're finding, and I know personally from my experience, my guts, I have a lot of gut issues and you know, whether or not it's connected and whether anyone would say it's connected. For me, I personally have experienced my gut is better when I'm taking CBD or CBN, like on a regular basis, it helps me with my gut health, the inflammation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of research actually that's pointing to endocannabinoid and digestive relation and how so much of your inflammation is obviously coming from your gut. And I mean, that's where 75%, 80% of your immune system is located is all coming from your gut. So being able to have a healthy gut and having a healthy, you know, mind, gut, heart connection is really important. 
And a lot of that is now we're finding that it's absolutely interwoven within the endocannabinoid system, within that balance, within that homeostasis, right? It's huge. And stress, right? That yeah. that stress that really, really can mess with your digestive system. I mean, we're talking like holes in your gut. That has a huge part to do with issues within hormonal imbalance, with stress, with, you know, this sort of cyclical nature of fatigue and immunity issues as well. Like it all starts kind of really coming together. So absolutely, if you can fix your gut, do that mm-hmm. first. Like, <laughs> yeah, that is the first thing. If you know that you have digestive problems, that's number one yep. for me. Oh, this has been amazing. That's really cool to hear your experience with that. Yeah. And, you know, my husband has, you know, will occasionally take gummies to help him sleep. He prefers that route. And those are more, you know, I don't know the difference, but THC, you know, gummies. And I've tried them a couple times, not for me, like they actually cause more anxiety for me, which has been interesting. But it's like, this is this is just like anything, we just have to try and and figure out what works. And yeah, so these products just have changed my life. So if someone, mm, thank you. So if somebody was really struggling with stress, you know, normal everyday stress, right? Like what products would you recommend for them to get started if they've never taken anything? Because you have it in all different forms. The way that I typically consume is with the oil, like the droppers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if someone is new to a CBD product, and they're dealing with some, you know, normal levels of stress, maybe some heightened stress due to, you know, whatever's going on in their life, the oil is absolutely where I suggest people starting off with because it's something you can control very much. Also, the absorption that happens within your mouth, within your mucosal membrane, they call it sublingual absorption. But basically what happens is it, you can get it right into your bloodstream pretty quickly if you are like leaving it in your mouth for a long time. So if people are dealing with stress and they like need something to help chill them out right then, and oil is really fast acting. And again, you can really control exactly how much you want to take into your body. In our product lineup, we have four different like strengths of a CBD product. They are all the exact same like formula of CBD. They're just in different ratios of CBD to organic MCT oil. That's what we standardize our products with. So we have like a 300 milligrams per bottle. It's per bottle, not per dropper. We have a 600, a 1200, and a 2400. So that 2400 milligram CBD bottle in each dropper is going to be giving you 80 milligrams of CBD. That's a lot. And that's also a decent amount of THC in there as well, because remember, we're right around like 0.3%. So it's something that I would always suggest starting low, right? It's also less expensive if you do like the 600 milligram, right? So you can just start out, try out the 600, see how you feel. If you are someone who is very sensitive, like so sensitive to everything you take, you have to be really careful about what you eat. Maybe you have digestive issues. Something like the 300 milligram is something that we might suggest for someone like that. But most people start off with the 600. That's like pretty straightforward. And then again, if you're dealing with sleep issues, the regular strength CBN oil is a great choice. If you are someone that's dealing with like, you know, sleep issues, or let's say you're dealing with something that you are not looking for like quick activation of your endocannabinoid system, you need more prolonged, right? Like let's say you go to work and you won't be able to take Let's say you're a teacher and mm-hmm. you're, you know, in a classroom setting and you can't take an oil, you can't bring it to class with you, whatever. Having something like a capsule or a soft gel, which is the exact same formula as our CBD oils, it's literally just put into a gelatin soft gel. That's going to take a little bit longer for your body to be able to break down and work through. So something like a CBD capsule or a soft gel might be best for that person. So Yeah, it just kind of depends on what your lifestyle is like. But I always say go for the oils first and try Mm -hmm. it out and experiment. Amazing. Okay. And one last thing I have to say before we get to the rapid fire is the pet stuff. Oh my gosh. So I, you know, chocolate lab lover all the way. Our last boy before our new puppy we have now, Hunter, 
he had severe elbow dysplasia and just arthritis and so much pain. So we started giving him CBD towards the second half of his life once we discovered it. And he could move around so much better. There was a huge difference between a day that I gave him and I didn't, right? It was like the stiffness in the joints and the way he would get up being an older dog. He was, you know, 14 years old when he passed away and it made a huge difference. And now this little maniac of a puppy that I have, he gets CBD cookies. He gets the cookie form when I'm about to leave him, like a little before I'm going to leave him because he has such anxiety when we leave. So for two Mm. totally different reasons. But yeah, Hunter used to get the oil form and you know, people would say, try and get it in his mouth, but I just put it on his food because he was not a dog that was going to let you put it in his mouth. So yeah. I would put it on his food and it would, I think, probably take longer to break down, but huge difference. And then with Bozzy, he gets it for totally different reasons and the cookie form works for him. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, like I said, everyone's got an endocannabinoid system. So yeah. It works for them just like it works for us. You just have to, you know, be cautious and see, you know, how they're responding to it. A really cool thing about our pet oils is that they are the exact same formula as our human oils. We don't do anything different. It's literally just different packaging. It's still full spectrum. We're not changing it at all. It's just something that people like to know, you know, roughly what the serving suggestion should be for pets versus people, um, and feel confident and comfortable that the product will be okay for your pet. So our pet oils work really well, because they are the exact same thing. As we don't do anything to we don't add any flavors, we don't have any like fake chicken flavor in it. And they work really well for a lot of people. And actually, a lot of dogs love the way that they taste, which I think is crazy but they it's just because we're not doing anything to it you know Mm -hmm. we're letting it be as it should so that's great that it's working because it works for people just the way it does for dogs i love that all right let's do it let's do the rapid fire so all right i'm ready for it thank you for all of this information it's just been incredible i've learned so many things from it and i know it's made a huge huge difference in my life so hopefully whoever needs to hear this will here with a and we have a coupon at the end so stay tuned for that so all right rapid fire okay what's your favorite book okay favorite book uh would probably be braiding sweetgrass by robin wall kimmer if you haven't read it go read it right now everyone's read it it's like a you know it's a new york times bestseller that's probably my favorite book in terms of like reading my favorite book also i have a second answer yeah please my favorite book also just in terms of like what it means to me would be the Lord of the Rings series. Oh. I can't not mention that. I love it so much and Perfect. like for totally different reasons. But yeah, that's those are my two answers. Mm, I love it. What are you currently reading right now? So right now I'm reading Overstory by Powers, I think Richard Powers, I think is his name. And um, it's a very intense book. Okay. Really intense. It's all about trees, but you should read it. Okay. My mom made me read it. You should read it. It's great. All right. Sometimes with those intense books, I just have to read like 10 pages at a time, like just a short It's been a slow, yeah, it's been a very slow go for me as well. Okay. We'll put it on the list. What is one thing you know for sure? That we are all at the right place, at the right time, with the right people, and the universe is unfolding as it should. And almost more importantly, everyone else is also in the right place at the right time with the right people and the universe is unfolding as it should. I know Mm. that to be true in my heart. Oh, you are speaking to my soul right there. I love that. (laughs) Thank you. And do you have a favorite quote or poem, something you'd like to leave us with? I actually, yeah, I've thought about this a little bit and I'm going to read a part of the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving Address, which if okay. you're not familiar with it, I would definitely just like, it's it's all written out. This is the Mohawk translation. But as someone who's lived in upstate New York my whole life, I have to, you know, give thanks to the land that I was born on. And uh, it absolutely is a huge part of, you know, this area. 
And uh, this is the part where they are giving thanks for the enlightened teachers. And after listening to your podcast, I felt it very appropriate because it's all about learning, right? That's what we're here for is just learning and relearning and unlearning. And it goes like this. We gather our minds to greet and thank the enlightened teachers who have come to help throughout the ages. When we forget how to live in harmony, they remind us of the way we were instructed to live as people. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to these caring teachers. Now our minds are one. That's it. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting with that right now. Hmm. Never heard that. So thank you. We'll be sure to put that in the show notes so anyone can visit that. Yeah, I'll well. send you I'll send you a link for it. It's if you're not familiar with the Thanksgiving address, just real quick, yeah. it's just something that at every like council meeting, at every, you know, major event, they're supposed to do it at like the beginning of every school day. It's this very long but very thorough giving of thanks to they do the stars and they start with mother earth and they talk, you know, they do the waters, the fish, the people, the mothers, the sun, right. And they just go through everything. And it's just this amazing ritual of being able to have everyone collectively start any conversation, whether it be political or environmental or, you know, ritual, anything like that, being able to start that with, our minds are one, right? We are all coming together to in, in gratitude, right? In this spirit of gratitude. And I think it's so important. And I wish that people did it for everything all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. And you, I believe it, are exactly where you are meant to be. And it, it just Thank speaks, you. speaks to Me your... Too. Yes. And so for anyone who wants to try Head and Heal... Go to headandheal.com. We have a code. It's the emotional expedition for 25% off your order of $75 or more. And then we also have another code, $20 off your first order if you don't hit that $75 mark. So I will link it in the show notes. Anything else we need to say? That's all I can think of. Okay. I, I feel like we've talked so much science and not so much emotional, but oh, I'm no. just in terms of the, you know, I know. <laughs> and just last thing though, is that this, in terms of like how I'm feeling right now, tapping yeah. into my body emotions, talking to you, I'm just feeling very elated and excited. And thank you so much for having this amazing platform for people to, you know, go through the experience of tapping into their emotions, maybe for the first time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah. Thanks, Meg. This has been great. Thank you so much for tuning into the episode, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're ready to dive deeper into your own emotional expedition, I invite you to join me in an intimate eight-week virtual book study of Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart. And in case you're not quite ready to join the study, I wanted to share a free offering that I often suggest to people as a little bit of a compass to get them started on their emotional journey, the meditation to alleviate stress. You can find the meditation and the book study linked below. I'm so grateful you're here. Thank you for listening. And if you loved this episode, will you please share it with a friend or two? Be sure to rate, review, and follow the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, so you're sure to never miss a single episode. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM Network. Sound Advice FM. Women's Voices Amplified.